Hello and welcome to the Creek Cuculus. I'm a monk and today we are in Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lords. We are continuing our Let's Play series that we started a while ago. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying. We're picking up from exactly where we left off. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how this episode evolves. Let's just have a quick look. So we actually could use with recruiting a couple more people uh, just to pop us up to uh, 84 as that's our current limit. Let's have a look. We've got some upgrades to do as well. Do we have enough money? We do have enough money. We do need to get some more money though. Uh, what are we on? 14,000. That's kind of a risky zone. So yeah, we absolutely need to uh, get some more money in this episode if we can. Someone also asked if we could do a bit of smithing uh, next time as well. So we're going to try and look at doing a bit of smithing in this episode. There we go. So we've got our upgrades. That's going to cost us four grand. Ouch. That's quite a bit. However, we will get some leadership experience for this. There we go. We did get that. Let's have a look at us and our character and what we're doing where we are. So we have an attribute point to spend. I think I'm going to put that on intelligence. Both those stats need to be increased. Uh, we have four focal points as well. So I'm going to put... Two of them on the steward. And one of them on leadership. There we go. Uh, we have a perk to pick in charm. 20% uh, chance to avoid persuasion critical foul. I like that. Or 10% better chance to um, double persuasion chance. Again, I like that as well. This is for when we're later in the game when we start recruiting lords into our into our uh, kingdom we got one on tactics as well your what suffers yeah let's go to that one and then we have a point to pick in riding as well let's see which one do we want? Increase your mount's hit points by 20%. Personally, I prefer that. Um, having your horse not die from underneath you on the battlefield is incredibly important. Um, we've got one more focal point left. And I'm trying to figure out what would be best to spend it on. I think riding, athletics... Could be good ones. There's no point putting it in scout or tactics right now because we're so low on attribute points here. Um, I feel like I'm just going to put it in leadership. I'm going to max this out eventually anyway. So, yeah, we'll put it right there. Clan, let's look at us real quick. This is the Critically Clueless. We have two right now. However, our brother is extremely low on troops. Uh, so we kind of need to make sure that he replenishes those. And then that way he's back up to full health or full strength, I should say. Um, so if we just pop him out and he can go ahead and go around and get some more troops. Always recruit him and recall him in a moment. Oh, hello, troops. Slightly one too many there, but there we go. Now we are back to full. So let's pop up, let's pop up here. This is one of our towns. I think we're at war against Sturgia. We are at war against Sturgia. Uh, let's see if we have anything to sell. What do we have on us? What can we get rid of? We have a banner. We 
we don't need any of this stuff we obviously got all of this from uh, from battles so we can get rid of all of this um, obviously if anything is better than what we're currently wearing we're going to be wanting to keep that like so a lordly strapped male let's pop them on a better armor rating than what we actually have all the way down go down to see if these gauntlets are any better they are not we currently have better gauntlets than what we've won uh, so all the way down all the way down nope we have better than that too some shoulder pads what are these looking like ah these are better than what we have let's pop them on yeah back up to 20 armor 20 and, and 10 armor armor there works out pretty good yeah see i prefer what we've got i prefer what we've got currently we have some javelins to break down having all these weapons to break down is going to be better than uh, selling them in the shop especially if we're going to look at getting into smithing uh, I think it's really important to have those weapons to break down. Uh, they have no more money, so we can leave all of that as it is. Now, Highland Daggers. Highland Daggers aren't bad when it comes to smithing items. So we can pick up a few of these because we still have things that we could sell anyway. Um, Anything else there? The wooden hammers, really good for wood. We could use them. We get everything they got of those wooden hammers. They've got no tribesmen throwing daggers, which are the absolute best daggers you could get, um, or throwing daggers you could get. We don't need to worry about that too much. How are we for food? We're okay for food, and we could use some wood. So let's grab all that. There we go. So we're still going to make quite a bit of money out of this. Let's see. I think we had we had a shield to sell. There we go. Okay. So last thing I want to look at real quick before we start is parties and companions. Members, companions. So we can still have one more companion. Okay, that's cool. Let's look at the tavern and see who they've got. Well now, stream. Because when it comes to smithing, what we really want is as many and as much companions as possible because they all help out, or they, they can help anyway. Um, so we have quite a low smith, but this guy right here had quite a high smithing, uh, which works for us. Before we do that, however, let's go down to enter the arena. That's what we want to do. Because a companion, he's he's good. He has a high smithing already. However, some of the perks and stats that he actually has equipped to all the perk tree that he has equipped, I would like to change that. Um, Smithing. Now that cost me two and a half grand. Let's back out real quick. And there we 
is he? He is here. There we go. So he has two perks. Uh, so first of all, I would always, always recommend the charcoal maker because it is just so um, useful. Basically, you end up getting more charcoal for less wood. So it's really important and you will thank me later. Um, and then we're also going to do the curious smelter. So for everything that he breaks down, he's more likely to learn components. There we go. Now he's level 18 and he only has four endurance. So he's not going to be able to get all the way up to the top, unfortunately. Um, that is kind of annoying. Our brother has got a perk point to put on as well. There we go. Let's just see what and who can do what, why, when. I'm going to make an absolutely brilliant uh, caravan one day. There we go. Okay, so let's pop back in here and go down to Smith. And what we want is to smelt everything down. I'm going to try and do it with this guy right here because he's going to learn the absolute most from it. Oh, look at those daggers. Look how much they actually get you. What we really want from these daggers is the steel and the fine steel. Items that give you steel, items that give you fine steel are quite rare when it comes to actually building up and actually having the parts to make enough swords to sell for profit though. Iron is going to be a really, really crucial early game for you. break all this down because of course the more quicker we break all this down the more materials we are going to have and we're going to need some more charcoal after we rest as well we're up to 51 grand there so i think the warring or the couple of you know battles that we won uh in the last episode really helped us out there but to be fair, if this town had more money, we still had more gear to sell as well. I'm pretty sure we had a tournament helmet uh, that we had to sell for like 16,000. So it wasn't as bad off from cash as it appeared. There we go. Now what I would recommend to anyone and everyone um, that is looking to get into smithing is I would go for two-handed swords. Now, the reason I'd say go for two-handed swords is because you get the most experience and the most money for the low-quality two-handed swords. Obviously, as you go up in levels, it can vary, and you can get um, you know different different parts unlocked at different speeds, and you might be able to get lucky. Personally, in my main playthrough, I found that two-handed pole arms absolute best value for money i'm selling a single pole arm for like forty-seven thousand, which is insane absolutely insane um but when you're very first starting off and you just need a character to gain experience to level up and get those smithing perks uh, two-handed swords is where you're going to get it so we are minus in our in our money at the moment um Yes, we are minus the the spice vendor as well is only 42 or plus 42 at the moment, which which actually kind of sucks. Kind of need them to start making us a little bit more money than they're actually making us. Um, let's rest really quickly. And then we can finish breaking down all the gear that we were breaking down. Let's have a look. There we go. We have just hit our 25, which means we get our first perk on smithing on our main character. 
Now, I would recommend finding a companion that you don't mind dedicating um, points and perks to because it will save you a lot in the long run. Um, if you waste attribute points and focus points, maybe not the focus points, but the attribute points, you know, getting up to eight attribute points on endurance just for smithing, you may find you don't have enough attribute points on something that really matters like leadership or stewardship, you know, that can really make the difference in your game as well, especially if you want the high march speed um, or march size. Should be rested enough now. Now let's quickly pop onto our character. Uh, smithing, there we go. So he can finally be a charcoal maker, which we absolutely wanted. Now let's pop down into smithing once again. I think we have like, yeah, we got like four items left to break down. As you can see, two pieces of hardwood is going and making. Uh, three charcoal here now beforehand it was the opposite it was two was only making one that sucks uh, let's see yeah so let's go for this person right here as you can see two goes for one but with the charcoal maker two goes for three which is a massive difference and you always need always need charcoal okie dokie so sword what were we making two-handed swords that's what we were making let's go to all the parts that we have unlocked which is gonna be like nothing yeah i think that's everything we've got which is really bad maybe let's go to an order they got an order they've got two-handed order there we go we're not gonna get anything for this i don't think Order difficulty is only 30 actually, so we may get. You seem to get a lot more experience doing the orders than you do for just making a single weapon, uh, which is really nice. Um, so they're absolutely worth doing those orders, regardless of you know uh, your current level. Just for the experience alone, plus the more orders you complete, the more quickly you'll unlock uh, the rest. He was displeased. And we've got one more that we can make. Okay, okay. So now let's go on to again what we can make. And we're going to go back to the two handed swords. And it looks like we actually did learn a couple of bits from making those within the orders which is cool what you really want from this is high swing speed um or swing damage should i say however because we've got absolutely nothing here it's really not going to matter to us we just need to make something and the more we make the more we'll be able to sell And we have a lot of smithing resources already, you know, despite us only having a couple of battles, despite us only, you know, tinkering around with smithing for a tiny little bit of time. We've got a lot of resources there um, for us to strip apart and to make into um, crafted weapons. Now, our crafted weapons at the moment are going to be worth nothing. Absolutely nothing. They're going to be awful. But... Um, the more we smith, the higher we get our level, the more they're going to be worth. So if we actually pop into trade, you can see they're only worth between, what is it, 5 and 800 dinars. And the only reason those ones are worth slightly more is because, of course, as we smithed, we got experience. And you got um, 
yeah, just got better at smithing. There we go. And I don't think we unlocked anything. It is definitely worth checking the higher the level um, around, the better for us. The more I end up selling for, the better quality gear that we are using, as in the materials. And you can see that crafting weapons actually gives you a lot of XP as well. Crafting two-handed swords, I don't know what it is about two-handed swords, but two-handed swords gives you the most XP per unit crafted out of all of the forms that you can actually craft. Which is why I always recommend them, because you want to be gaining that experience as quickly as possible. Sooner you gain that experience, sooner you can move on to other things. It just happens to be that because the two-handed swords are the one that you're going to be crafting at the beginning, that's also going to be the one that you're going to have the higher crafting um, skills for and uh, blueprints for. But once you are up to a certain standard and you have a decent amount of money, it's definitely worth having a look um, and experiment around to see what else you can craft and if you can craft anything better than your two-handed swords. Javelins used to be an awesome one, to be fair, but that kind of got nerfed a lot. Oh, we need some more charcoal. move on to here and then go back oh there we go we are out of crude iron so i guess we are done for now when it comes to the smithing but we can sell everything we've got and we got a lot to, in, to be able to sell, which is cool. Instant printable cash. What's that? 32,000 we'd get for that? So I'm going to cancel that. I'm not going to have, um, not going to have him sell that. But what I am going to do is grab hold of my party member, whatever he is. Let's see if we can find him. There he is. We're going to grab him and get him to unleash his way to me. Where exactly is he? There he is. He's all the way over there. We're going to bring him to us and then I'm going to give him all of our crafted weapons. And as you saw, we would get 32,000, I think it was. But if we give them to um, our brother, then he can take them to a town. He doesn't have to pay any kind of, you know, trade tax or anything like that. And he'll get all of the money um, that they're actually worth. It's been a so what I should actually do is get him out of my army really quickly. Let's manage uh, and then disband. There we go. And then we have a little chat with him. We will, I'd like to discuss something else. I have a proposal that will benefit us both. And then we are looking for all of the two-handed weapons.
There we go. Now we did miss a couple, but it doesn't matter. And there we go. So he has all of those. Now I'm going to hit fast forward and watch him do whatever it is he does. I think he's just popped in, to be fair. It looks like he has. And if we pop here... We can see that we're going to get a party income, um, which is, you know, money that we are gaining from him. And that's going to be 2,700 dinars every day until that goes down to pretty much standard usual stuff. And on the whole, it's going to work out better for us and easier for us to give him the gear and the goods to sell other than ourselves. As you saw, we got some more money and it will gradually decrease um, as the days go on. But it also means we don't have to ride around to every single town um, and you know find a town that actually has enough money to sell our smithing gear. At the beginning, it may not be worth it. Um, I found personally that long term, it just works out better. And of course, once he's sold, because, you know, he sold that whole lump sum in that one town, he have absolutely nothing on him right now. So you can go ahead and just recruit them back up. For whatever reason, the game doesn't actually give it to you. Hey, he's in another army. That's just mean. Which army did he pop into? This one. It's going to cost me 30 to disband, but we're going to disband it because I want my party member with me there we go let's see if we can find someone to raid like a little battle Oh, there is a battle right here. It looks like someone could use a hand. Let's go and help these guys out. I think without us, they would have lost as well. So we earn some party um, relation here, which is good. We do massively outnumber them, so I'm just going to hit the charge. charge. ourselves some XP, get ourselves some points in our one-handed swords, these look like really low-level Sturgeons as well. Need to get ourselves a better pole arm, apparently we don't even have one that can clutch. We have we have a javelin sticking out of our shield as well. Random. Nope, those don't see anybody. 
There's got to be like one more person left. It's not saying we've won the battle yet. Only killed four people, very sad. Did get 63% of the loot though. I feel like that's a little bit more generous than we should have got. Uh, there are a grand total of four people left. We're just gonna send the troops for that. And we are gonna let them go and build up some relationship. As you saw, we got charm experience for doing that as well. Oh, we got some good gear there. Really good gear there. That's very cool. I feel like maybe we could chase him down. Hoping we're faster. Oh, he went straight to the... Yeah. He didn't want to fight. Oh, he's back out. Okay. And he's in between our brother as well. Can we? Mm -hmm. We did what manage to grab him. And the brother joined as well, which is cool. So we massively outnumber once again. I'm gonna get the cavalry units to follow me. Uh, I'm gonna get all these guys just to march in. But I see their cavalry is up here. So I kind of want to meet them. Sturgia had better troops. I feel like they have good troops, but none of them are like the best units. They just have like, you know, a good all round troops or you know, cool looking troops at least. There we go, another one done. Dude's like missions away. I believe that's it. Don't think we're going to catch this one. And now it must be time for us to play Hunt of the Last Survivor. Because yeah, I can't quite see him. Let's see if we've actually already won. No, we haven't won. There is still someone around. Maybe this is him. It is. Maybe he's the last guy. Oh, is he escaping? Nope, nope. He's still he's still here. 
So let's take care of him. And after we win this battle, I am going to end this episode here, guys. Thank you for joining me in this another episode. And so thank you for supporting this playthrough as well. Don't forget, we do actually have that active and growing Discord. So if you want to jump in the Discord and chat about your game and let us know how your quest within banner lords is going the link is down in the description but until next time guys i've been a monk we've been a critic and i will see you in the next episode real soon until then take it easy and happy gaming